Hey everybody, Sam Jackson with Heartland Turf and Landscape here again, and I'm doing my first video in my series about overseeding the lawn. It, this first step is going to be if you have a really heavy infestation of uh, anything undesirable. It doesn't necessarily have to be a certain weed. Uh, there's other grass varieties that are undesirable in our area, such as Bermuda grass or St. Augustine grass or even zoysia. So if you've got, uh, or if there's a heavy crabgrass infestation or if the lawn has just been unkept for many years and there's a really heavy weed infestation of clover and dandelion, uh, basically if you've got a heavy infestation of any kind, it's easiest just to eliminate all that stuff, kill it off completely, and start from fresh with your fall overseeding. So I'm going to show you here an example. This little area behind me has a Bermuda grass infestation. I'll give you a closer look at what that looks like. You can kind of see the yellow patches here. So that's technically further regions further south uh, actually use Bermuda grass as a turf type grass. A lot of lawns will be Bermuda grass. In our area, primarily it's tall, tall fescue and bluegrass are the primary grass types. So when you've got those two different grass types, this grass will eventually green up but for the time being in the in the spring and fall it doesn't blend with the rest of the lawn and it looks just ugly and yellow so let's take a closer look at that okay so here you can see this uh different kind of grass and it's even got a different texture to it it's kind of more stringy uh, as opposed to your desirable turf grass which this is a, a, a tall fescue here where it stands uh, nice and upright and it's got a deep green color already this year. So uh, if you were try to try to over fix this problem with just overseeding, uh, you're not gonna have much success because all this Bermuda grass is gonna make it way more difficult for that new grass seed to get established. So basically we're at the point now, we wanna kill all this off and, and start from fresh. Okay, so now's the part of the process where we're gonna take our uh, glyphosate which is a non-selective herbicide, meaning it's going to kill anything you spray it on. Um, make sure you, this can be found at any big box store, uh, home and garden center, pretty much any place that has uh, you know a nursery or a home and garden center. Uh, you're you probably familiar with the common trade name of Roundup. So first of all, make sure you follow the label instructions and you're applying it at the rate uh, indicated by the label instructions, and you should be just fine. The one thing to keep in mind is that this product kills the grass or weeds or whatever you're trying to kill by being absorbed through the leaf surface of the plant. So it's not necessary to soak it really heavy and soak things down into the soil. As long as you are wet, thoroughly wetting the surface of whatever plant you're trying to kill off, that's gonna be effective as long as you're applying that at the recommended amount uh, rate on the label. So let's get to it and let's spray some area here. By the way, I've just got a uh, little backpack sprayer, but if you've got a small area that you need to do, you can get really easily, uh, super cheap, a little sprayer that holds a couple gallons that you pump up by hand and you spray this just for this larger area and makes it a little easier to spray this larger area here. Another thing to keep in mind, if uh, you're going to be spraying an area uh, that's inside of other grass that you don't want to kill, make sure that you're walking backwards so that you're not walking through the area you sprayed because you'll leave tracks of dead footprints wherever you track this stuff across the rest of your lawn. So keep that in mind. Be careful not to have uh, wet shoes and then go walking through areas that you don't want to kill. Okay, <clears throat> and there you have it. So, you know, it took me about five minutes to spray all that area and give it a thorough soaking. One thing I did not mention at the beginning that you want to keep in mind is that, uh, again, be very careful with how you apply this. Uh, make sure that you're not applying it on a windy day because anything that this stuff gets picked up and carried by the wind and lands on, it's going to damage that plant. So, 
ideally do it on a very calm day and then um, you should see some pretty good results you may need to follow up after about a week to 10 days and if you still see a little bit of green here and there spray a little bit more uh, but you want this to be completed about two weeks before you plan on seeding so make sure you've got this killed off with enough time for uh, two weeks so that when you plant your grass seed it's not going to affect the germination of your grass seed so that's it for today's video and the next step will uh, be in my next video where we'll show how we once this has died off how we prep the ground uh, getting it ready to actually sow the seed thanks